On Black Tuesday, October 29, 1929, the U.S. stock market crashed. This cataclysm reflected a worldwide economic crisis. Between 1929 and 1933, unemployment in the United States increased from 4 to 25 percent. No community was left untouched. Quoting Supreme Court Justice Louis Brandeis, the nation faced an emergency more serious than war. A confused and hungry people turned to the government for assistance. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's administration responded with a series of relief measures and welfare agencies. The goal of this New Deal was relief, recovery, and reform, collectively known as the three R's. This nation is asking for action, and action now. Various agencies were formed, including the Works Progress Administration, or WPA, which at its peak employed 3.3 million people at a subsistence wage. The WPA was the largest employer in the country until its closure in 1943. Almost 75% of WPA funding went towards public facilities such as highways, streets, public buildings, airports, utilities, dams, sewers, parks, libraries, and recreation fields. 650,000 miles of roads, 78,000 bridges, 125,000 buildings, and 700 miles of airport runways were constructed. Virtually every community in America has a park, bridge, or school built under the aegis of this agency. 7% of the WPA budget was allocated to the formation of arts-related projects under the collective name Federal One, which included the Federal Music Project and the Federal Art Project. The result was 225,000 concerts to audiences totaling 150 million people and almost 475,000 artworks, including 42,000 easel paintings. The Murals Division produced more than 2,500 works located in post offices, hospitals, schools, and other public places. Of these, five were created by Maurice Del Mew in Marin County, California, including one at Tamil Pius High School. He was born in Paris and came to the United States when he was five years old. He came to San Francisco. He was trained as an artist. He was a draftsman. He was an illustrator, a painter, a muralist. And from the murals that he did leave, we can see that his work was really superior. With the Great Depression, which started in 1929 and then just got worse and worse, everybody was losing their job. But among the hardest hit, were artists because they traditionally live on the edge anyway unless they're extremely successful and they traditionally had to rely on patrons just as much as anybody during the Renaissance did. Roosevelt came to power in March of 1933 determined to do something. He didn't really know what to do as he said we'll try anything. If it doesn't work we admit that it didn't work and we try something else. One of the things I really admire about the arts projects is that it started right off the bat among the first alphabet soup agencies. This was under Harry Hopkins, the administrator of WPA, and he famously said when the artists were attacked because they should be out digging ditches with everybody else, he said, they've, they've got to eat like anybody else and they may as well be doing what they're trained to do. I think that one of the things that FDR did was he established a socialist policy in establishing the WPA. The skills of the artists were celebrated as much as the skills of the bridge builder. During that period of time when the government put artists to work, it was a, it was a boom for them. They knew that they were participating in something that was unprecedented and to their minds kind of glorious in serving the public in the way that they had never been able to do it before. Music and art was brought into urban and rural communities, and people would be lined up around the blocks getting into either free concerts or concerts that were, you know, five cents or 25 cents a piece. One of my favorite photographs is of young children at a WPA-built auditorium hearing for the first time through a WPA orchestra classical music performed. Their faces are just glowing. 
hearing this marvelous music. The musicians and the actors got to experience the joy of presenting it and getting the response back from the audiences. So it's great now when we discover this stuff, particularly art which is as of high caliber as Maurice Del Muse murals. They need to be in a public place somewhere where people really can see them and enjoy them and think about the projects that produced them in the first place. The mural at Tamil Pius High School has been in storage for many years. It is a piece that has heretofore been invisible. People don't know that it exists anymore. The size of this painting is eight feet by 38 running feet, a long horizontal of rolling hills, the hills of Marin. It was taken off the wall where it was first installed, and this was because of a renovation project in the structure of the building. The canvas was yanked from the walls. So what we find now, the condition of the painting is that it has cracked in many areas. It was rolled up for quite a long time, tightly wound face side in. And what happens is that the canvas folds over on itself and pops the paint. At some point, the canvas also got wet. There's quite a lot of mold on the back side of the painting. So we've found that there are a number of damages to this painting. It's going to be an engineering feat. I started Mill Valley Philharmonic as a community orchestra, which is of the people, by the people, and for the people. And that includes what happens inside the orchestra in the community of musicians, and it happens outside the orchestra in terms of the communities we serve. And because part of our mission as an orchestra is to collaborate with community organizations, I contacted Art for TAM, which is the restoration project, and we developed this program together so that now what's involved is showing the mural that's at Tamil Pais High School and doing a program that is based on music from the 1930s inspired by Works Progress Administration. One of the things that's really exciting about this particular program is that I've come to realize that our mission is reflected in the mission of the WPA. That is that we are able to bring ourselves into a variety of communities and perform as well as collaborate with other community organizations and allows people to discover in their own backyards what WPA legacy is left to us here in Marin, in Mill Valley, in San Francisco, and in the Bay Area. There is a, an inscription over a WPA built city hall in Cucamonga, California, which I think really sums it up. It says, the noblest motive is the public good. That sounds a little bit corny to our ears now, but it was something that they really lived by. The idea of public good, public service. That we were as a nation, a community. It's our responsibility to be stewards of this material, otherwise we, we don't know where we've been. It's not a piece that should end its life in a debris box. It's one that should be honored, respected, and given the chance to give back to the people who view it. And once it's put back together again, it should be masterful. It's just a beautiful piece.